In the following tutorial, we will be going over how to integrate Okta for SSO login against your GitHub organization. Before you proceed, it is important that you keep in mind that before you are able to do the setup, you must have access of being at least a GitHub enterprise organizational owner. And in Okta, you must be your group admin or have super admin privileges in Okta. Now, I'm already in GitHub. I'm going to go into my organizations. And I'm going to go into my Okta single sign-on org, which I am the owner. You know if you're the owner or not if you have the settings tab, by the way. And I'm going to go ahead and click on settings. From within settings, I'm going to scroll down all the way to where it says authentication security. And for starters, I'm going to go ahead and under SAML single sign-on, I'm going to click on enable SAML authentication. I'm going to leave this here for now, but before I leave this, I'm going to go ahead and copy my organizational name, which I pick it up from the URL, but you could also just copy it from here, assuming they're the same. And I'm going to jump into Okta. From within Okta, this is my admin portal view. I'm going to go into my applications. And I'm going to open the catalog. From within the catalog, I'm going to search for GitHub. Once you do, you're going to notice a significant amount of applications are going to come up. Since we are setting up the GitHub Enterprise Cloud Organization SAML configuration, make sure you click on this one. You'll notice this one sustains SAML and SCIM capabilities for user provisioning. I'm going to click on Add Integration. Now from here, I'm going to go ahead and that organizational name that we copied on before, I'm going to just paste it here. I'm going to make sure there's no spaces in the front or in the back. And on the application label, you can leave it as is. I personally like to give it the same name just to make sure I'm able to identify them easier. And click on Done. Now, from within this panel, I'm going to go ahead and assign my user. The reason you want to sign your user as the first step is because at a certain point within this setup, we're going to have to test our integration against Okta. If your user is not assigned to the application, you might get a significant amount of errors such as a 403 unauthorized or application not authorized to the user. It really depends, right? So we're going to go ahead and assign my user for starters. Once done, I'm going to click on save and go back and click on Done. From here, I'm going to go into the Sign On tab. And I'm going to scroll down just to make sure everything looks OK. Pretty much what I'm looking for is that there are no conditions that could affect my setup. And then over to the right side, I'm going to click on View SAML Setup Instructions. Now, Okta provides this in a very easy way to understand. And I'm going to start by copying these values and start pasting them in GitHub. And finally, we're going to go ahead and copy the certificate. Perfect. Now, I'd like to expand this just to make sure I did not copy any additional spacing or anything. I want to make sure that this looks OK, just as a good practice. And now I'm going to go back into Okta. Now, since my application is already active and I have already assigned my user and I've already pasted all of the values in GitHub, I'm going to go ahead and test my SAML configuration by clicking on Test SAML Configuration. Perfect. So it already lets me know that my SAML provider settings have been validated. Remember to save your changes. Now, the reason this automatically did it for me is because I'm using the same browser to sign into Okta and to GitHub. However, if you're using separate browsers or maybe an private or incognito window as you're doing the setup, you might be prompted to enter your Okta credentials. Just go ahead and follow that procedure. All that we're looking for is that you're able to authenticate. Now that we've done this, I'm going to go ahead and save this settings. At this point, we have enabled SAML successfully. 
Now let's go ahead and start setting up Skim for user provisioning. Now to set up Skim, even before we head over to Okta, as a good practice, I like to go into my auth, zero auth application policy or zero auth app policy. And you might see that you have a policy restriction, access restricted. Now you can set specific policies to allow specific applications. For simplicity of this setup, we're going to go ahead and remove the restrictions for now. Once done, I'm going to head back into authentication security. And I'm going to go back into Okta. From within Okta, I'm going to go and hit the provisioning tab. And it immediately lets me know provisioning is not enabled. Perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and click on configure API integration. I'm going to click on enable API integration. And now it's going to ask me to authenticate against my GitHub Enterprise Cloud organization. As soon as I do, the following pop-up comes up. And it immediately allows me to move forward. Now keep in mind that the reason that happened instantly for me, it's because I am logged in already to GitHub. It just picks up that information from my browser and it allows me to move forward. Now that I've successfully authenticated, I can click on save. If you're not getting a successful authentication here, my advice to you is clear your cookies and cache or try this in an in private browser. As well, don't forget about removing the auth access policy that we did prior to coming over to Okta. As if that restriction is enabled, this integration will most probably fail because the app has yet not been granted access. With that being said, I'm going to go ahead and click on Save. Now that I've saved those settings, I'm going to click on Edit so I can enable Okta to create users, update user attributes, and deactivate users. This is all part of Skim, meaning that if I add a user, it will automatically generate an invitation inside my GitHub org for that user. If I remove a user, it will automatically remove that user from my GitHub enterprise organization as well. Once done, I click on Save. Perfect. At this point, we have successfully integrated both SAML and Skim. Now, if we head over to Assignments, you'll see that your user, the one that we provisioned, is giving you a warning sign here. Now, the reason you're getting this warning is because we had assigned this user before provisioning was enabled. So, in order to fix this, all you got to do is click on Provision User and says, some users were assigned to this application before provisioning was enabled and are not currently provisioned. Click O to sync with downstream app. So we're going to go ahead and click OK. And this is going to set a job within Okta to start that provisioning of your user. Now, you have the option to provision individual users or provision groups. If I wanted to provision a group, I just go ahead and click Assign, Assign to Group. I'm going to select my admins group and click Done. Once done, Okta will take care of start provisioning my users, as it has already done here, where you can see the warning signs no, not here anymore. And if you look at um, my other admin, in this case, Mona Okta, it's already um, letting me know that's adding that user. Now, the moment that a user is added, your users will immediately get an invitation to join your organization. This is part of the provisioning process. And the way that invitation looks is as follows. So since my user was provisioned, I can already see it says, hey, Jack G. Cafferty has invited you to join the Okta single sign-on organization. And so I have to click here to join that org. If we go back into GitHub, since we already set this up, if you go under people, you will be able to see that you have two invitations pending for my user provision and for um, mona.octa at githubdemo.com. This is part of the skin provisioning flow that we just set up. Now, you'll see this banner that says single sign-on has been enabled for Okta. Authenticate your account. Now, when setting up single sign-on at the org level, you have the option to enforce or not enforce single sign-on. Not enforce means that your users can authenticate with their normal GitHub credentials, but at the same time, they can link their account to your IDP by authenticating against your identity provider, in this case, Okta, 
and access your org through SSO. But in case you want to, let's say, enforce SSO so that anybody that's accessing your company resources has to use single sign-on, all you have to do is scroll down in your setup, click on single sign-on, which is this URL right here, so you can log in via SSO, and GitHub enables us to require or enforce single sign-on. Now, please keep in mind that when you enforce single sign-on, any user that has not yet linked their account will be automatically removed from your organization. Enforcing single sign-on also has a significant impact in items like bot accounts, which do need to have a name identity. More details on this will be shared within our documentation on what are the things you must look out for. Now, I'm going to go ahead and proceed on enforcing single sign-on. Once I hit on enforced, GitHub will provide me single sign-on recovery codes. The reason this is, it's that in case, let's say, there's something happening with your integration, maybe something happened in the Octa side of things that does not allow you to log in through SSO, you'll still re be able to regain access to your org using any of the following recovery codes. It's a good practice for you to download them, and you can store them in a secure location, or you can copy them. Once done, you can go back to settings. At this point, we have completed our configuration of Okta, setting up SAML for user authentication and SKIM for user provisioning. 